Alright guys, welcome. Let me turn on my lights so you guys can see me a little bit better. Uh, welcome back to another recap. Another day, another green day. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm saying another green day because yesterday I made my recap. I was red on the recap. I went over the trades. I was red, finished on the day. And then out of nowhere, I come back power hour and CMRA is still going. And so I decided to take a trade on CMRA. And yesterday, I mean, when I'm red on the day, I'm usually like, if I come back during power hour or I see something that's very, very obvious, I'm going to be careful, but I will take that trade if it's obvious. You know, if it's a red day, I don't want to increase it to a bigger red day. Even if it's a green day, I don't want to give profits back. But if it's something so obvious that I have to just trade it, I will jump in on it. And you can see yesterday, I mean, I was break even once, twice, three times. And the second I got green last night, I mean, yesterday at power hour, I just completely turned everything off. I, I mean, I sold. I was green on the day. I imported my trades, closed everything down, and walked away. Not necessarily because I wanted to keep a green streak alive, but because, you know, yesterday I struggled. And uh, from being down $200, $300, and then all of a sudden I'm back to green, and I'm like, you know, that's a good day. $300 that I just remade, uh, that I made back. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm up $60 on the day. To me, it was like, no, I'm up $300 on the day. I had already called it quits. So I decided to just call it a day. But, uh, yeah, my consistency has been there. I mean, this week um, and last week. My numbers aren't the biggest that I want it to be, but the market is not allowing me to scale up. Uh, but consistency is there. Uh, but uh, it is something that I've been working on to uh, scale up. Uh, you know, I know some of you guys might be watching. You're like, dude, what are you talking about? $600 a day? I would kill for $600 a day. And you know, the reason is, I mean, the, the reality is, yes, I would too. $600 a day is great. It's awesome. But I'm not day trading to just, you know, make 600 bucks a day. There's literally no limit to day trading. Every, t every time a new person wants to day trade and they come and ask me, and, hey, how much can I make? I'm like, how much do you want to make? You know, you can make $50 a day. You can make $500 a day. You can make $5,000 a day. You can make $50,000 a day. Obviously, you need to have the capital. But if you have the capital, you can scale day trading to however much you want. And and that's how I feel. I mean, I feel like this year market's been slow. Uh, SPY big old tank yesterday. I think SPY still is going to go down even more. Um, but I'm not looking to make $600 for the rest of my life. And I want to keep increasing these numbers and soon be a $6,000 day. You know, if... The, there's a big difference between this is 600 as opposed to this is 6,000, this is 500, this is 5,000, this is 3,000, this is 6,000 again, this is 1,000, this is 7,000. You know, those, that's a big, big difference between going through those numbers right there as opposed to my 700, 800, 700, 200 here. But anyways, that's something I'm working on. As a matter of fact, September, like... Uh, I've been going kind of backwards almost, but that, I think that's just part of the market. If I go look back at September of last year, because we're in September now, look at this month last year. It wasn't the best month either, not even close to the best months. But last year, I don't know if I was just super loose and super confident, if market was so hot and attractive that buyers were in. I don't know. But look at this month. Look at these numbers last year compared to my numbers this year. You don't see that often. You don't see a guy who's going backwards in trading. And I'm okay with it. I'm okay for now. I'm rambling on a little bit. I don't usually do this on my recap. So if you're new here, I, I apologize. But I'm rambling on a little bit. Uh, just kind of telling myself I need to step it up a little bit. But uh, look at these numbers, you know. Two red days last year, last month, last September, last year for 1800 1100 But this day is literally get wiped out in the first two days of the month. And then after that is... 1200 800 1000 1200 1000 1800 1000 12 1300 1000 1000 you know 800 1000 you know this this is a 10 plus k month or something like that and uh you know this year I'm not having that many $2000 days $1000 days or at least this month so far but uh you know we're just grinding we're staying low we're we're being careful with our plays we're being careful with the market uh, I'll show you guys today a couple of stocks completely tanked, completely flushed, and that made me a little bit cautious for the rest of the day, which is why I kind of started, uh, stopped kind of being aggressive on the day. But uh, any, anyways, stop rambling on here. I need to scale up, and and uh, but I will do it accordingly, not just because I have the money, I have the capital. I'm gonna stupidly scale up, but uh, I need to eventually start scaling up. Anyways, to the recap itself, uh, $600 on the day. It looks like I traded Kern, SPRC, Bioff, and ATXG. This is a options play that I made. Um, actually, I, I made like 
$250 on it, but if you guys are new here, if you guys don't see me stream live, I don't include any options to play on my trade review. My trade review is strictly buying and selling shares, uh, day trading it, you know? So let me go over these trades here. Uh, my first trade today was SPRC, and this is probably one of the cleanest pivots tr dip trades you will see. Uh, so let me refresh it to see. There we go. So SPRC gapper comes up, hits 123 high, pulls back down. Um, kind of have a downtrend on this one as well. So that high kind of misses that one, but I connected it here. And you can see kind of gets respected the first minute of Canada, uh, uh, market open, rips through it, pulls back, consolidates, flags basically over that downtrend. I missed it and then just rips up. And now here's the perfect dip uh Play. So this thing um, pulls back down and I'm looking for that 123 pivot pre-market high pivot to hold that support So stock rips through that level pulls down uh, at this point It was kind of consolidating here. So I was like maybe this thing just rips higher without doing that full pullback so I tried it here at 126 9 and it kind of was working a little bit, but decided to cut it out anyways. It wasn't really dipping, so I decided to cut that out completely. You can see I got in at 126.99, got out 126.5, so it looks like I barely lost anything. And then I was right. It pulled back down a little bit, and that's when I decided to punch the button again. 5,000 shares down here. Um, it looks like it decided to pull up again, and I still, for some reason, wasn't trusting it, so I got out. And then dips down to 123, holds it, and at this one, I'm like, you know what, that's it. But look at this. So I added 126, take it out 126. Added 125, take it out 124. Lost about $100 on that trade. It wasn't patient enough. And then drops down, rebuy. So I was down 100 on that trade because of this stupid thing here. I should have just held them and added again and taken 10,000 shares on the way up. Anyways, 123 pivot pivot held. Uh, I re-added on that thing, and I mean instant resolution starts popping up all the way. Gets a new high of day. Gets another high of day. Flags again. One minute pullback, or one minute flag, two minute pullback. Look at that volume on the way up. Look at that volume on the way down, and decides to go right back up for 139. Now, in this case, it tripled, quadrupled, quintupled 139. So, I was selling up here 136, 132. 6 133 and decided to just get out of that trade um, this was probably right there it was probably a four hundred dollar trade because remember i said i was down a hundred and then i made it back up to like three hundred and something dollars uh, 320 30 something like that so I was uh, up 300 and something and then I think I gave some back over here so about at 138 9 almost 139 sold the 138 1500 shares lost like 20 30 bucks there uh, but that's it that's a very clean pivot play very clean play that I did decided to see it early didn't work out stop out re added lower stop that again that second time was kind of me being impatient the third time was like you know what this is it I'm good to go let's buy in get that big breakout uh, next trade was be off uh, be off I will say I got kind of lucky on this one um, kind of lucky because I saw the move really early I saw that volume rip I saw the volume come in buyer step in and this thing ripped now in this case I saw this thing wanting to go uh, time on sales the screen didn't see a lot of buyers the way this thing popped up like this one one minute candle here in golf one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen almost thirteen candles with one candle I, that's strong right and i wanted this to slightly pull back it reclaimed view but i wanted it to slightly pull back and i was fixing to add fifteen hundred two thousand shares um yeah it's less than what i added on sprc but this stock is moving a lot faster you know i mean ten cents is right there this thing ripped from uh five seventies to 640s basically 670s a dollar a share with 2000 shares that's $2000 on on SPRC you're looking at a move of maybe what 10 20 cents what is I caught that whole move on that one here from 123 up to 139 15 cents you know that's not a lot be off is a lot so I'm going to drop my share size and be be careful with it but this thing instantly goes I take a trade there at VWAP I actually get filled high on it I get filled high on it because I it, I tried sniping that VWAP there, which is 568, and I didn't take it till 576, so 10 cents higher than I wanted to. But that stock was not stopping. The buyers were not giving up. Uh, I wanted to add 500 and then get another add closer down under VWAP, 500 more, 1,000 more, get my full share size. But my first add instantly just flew up. 
Um, and I was patient with these. I held it all through that candle. I was looking for high of day. Got high of day. This thing kept going. So I took some out over 609. Right at 609. That was my first profit target. That hit. And then I think I, at that point I was stuck in a halt on this one actually. This halted right here at 637. Um, 637 resumed. I held a little bit. Sold 100. And then on the push all the way back up here. Sold 100 more. And it looks like I had 100 for stop loss that I got stopped at right here. I think this needed to go right here on this push right here. Kind of holding low, dips down, decides to reclaim it, and then tries to break out. At that point, I was like, I'm putting my stop right below that because this candle is the one that needs to break a new high and keep going higher. If this doesn't, then I'm going to stop out. And that's exactly what happened. Try to dig in here. Looks like I made a penny, less than a penny on that trade. Small share size. And that was it for this one. I mean, pretty clean trading. I only had 62,000 volume today. I guess that's not bad. Um, after that, Kern. Uh, Kern, I was actually green on the name. Um, and then I gave it all back. This one had a very good trade at open. Uh, this trade right here. Breakout of high of pre-market, I believe, or something like that. Or had already broken pre-market. No, pre-market was 21. So it was right somewhere around here, 21, and got a breakout trade through there. But this one, again, I added small share size. I wanted a bigger pullback. I wanted for shell size. So even though I got this big move right here, that was only like a $30, $40 winner because this thing is moving a one, two pennies at a time. So I like didn't make anything even though that trade, the fit, the, the actual candles and the move was there. My, my share size for that trade was not and so I made $30 on a, a great trade and that actually kind of did upset me when I was trading I was like are you kidding me like I nailed this trade because I think I nailed, I nailed that trade and then when I was taking SVRC I took a red trade on that first one tried it again took a red trade again and then finally got the good one but that did kind of upset me then trying it here for high day this was a very close call um, kind of tried this first breakout didn't work tried it again bigger share size think the second time we're hitting it we're definitely gonna break out and it's two candles almost double top in there and protecting high of day. So I was like, I am out of this thing. I do not want to catch a small little pullback, little flush. If it does pull back, if it does little flush down to like 2274-ish, which is the level that I was watching all day long, I will add there. And this thing instantly tanked. Instantly tanked. This is one, well, this is one flush here. This is pretty aggressive here. This is pretty aggressive here, so now I'm on the lookout for the rest of the day. And on the stock in particular, I tried it here again. Looks like I bought 22.79, uh, 22.17, so I lost a little bit on that one. But um, seeing this move here and this move here kind of was like, you know what? I'm not trading the stock again. Whoever shorted this thing, congratulations. You got a very nice fade. Um, and then B off also had a pretty nice flush right here. See, this is a big curl back up. Hits high of day instant flush and then still continues that move down so I decided to just you know what take it slow take my green off the table and move away and I don't think I missed anything actually another one I traded was ATXG and ATXG oh wow ATXG is still going well this is one that I did miss let me see actually I was about to do my recap and I was looking at it right here I almost bought some right there. I legit almost bought some right there. Anyways, um, ATXG. I didn't see this move. Somebody in my live stream called it out right here and then decided to rip with low volume. I did see this one pulled back with low volume. I almost decided to jump in it. Decided it wasn't, uh, I didn't feel comfortable. I thought this thing was already on a very nice move. Thought maybe a bigger pull was coming. So, I decided to jump in it here for high day. I think this trade I was up like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. And when I closed it, it pulled back down on me. So I think I only made like 20 or $30. And then down here, I was trying to catch a five minute pullback. Look at that five minute uh, chart down here. So it rips up, pulls back, light volume, still light volume, touches ADMA, touches VWAP. I'm like, you know what? This might be a good entry. So I punched it there. It actually pulled back lower. I averaged in again. So my first ad was 474. My second ad was 469. Low of that candle is 467. So I was pretty adding pretty low on this thing. And this is one that moves fast, you know. To get it with two pennies from the low of the candle, it's pretty good. 67 right here is already 70. So I got that. The move starts working out. Kind of this candle here and this candle here had a lot of volume. It looked like it wanted to go, 
buyers were coming in and there's the uh, sellers were just not letting it go so I decided to fully get out of that play right there I was looking for a big curl back up with a thousand shares there could have ran it back up that would have been nice straight kind of have what you're seeing here right pull back there that's what you take your entry reverses pull back there that's where you take your entry reverses right um, and this thing is still kind of trending up here trading high uh, could be due for another uh, trade maybe but uh, I'm going to leave it alone and enjoy my $600 profit and that was it uh, I guess I could quickly talk about CMRA yesterday CMRA is the one that got me green yesterday so I saw this move here kind of consolidated and then it was still holding so I was like you know what I'm back in um, I will say on this one I got myself green on the name like $300 yesterday uh, let me see how much I ended on it CMRA 153 plus 250 like 300 so 300 total but then I got myself up to like 470 so I got some green trades through here and then I took a big trade here not a big trade but a bigger loss I think I lost like 150 200 dollars back on this trade here from 393 to 382 uh, with 1500 that's 10 cents 1500 share that's 150 dollars that's what I lost and then I made it back right here and that's when I decided to just call it a trade call it a day and end up green but I was I was getting green on this ticker pretty well yesterday um, but that's it so if you guys want I'm not gonna explain this one too much because it was yesterday's and I don't even remember what I was looking for I'm sure it was daily levels because I can see them down here anyways that's it for today guys I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video but you guys already know the drill if you guys want to watch me trade live go over to tradecaster.com cancel the payments and you can see me trade live free or you can do it right here on YouTube just click the notification bell and you'll know exactly when I go live 15 minutes before market opens if you like this recaps please 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 hit the thumbs up it's completely free and comment down below and actually that reminds me if you guys are still watching until now and you've watched yesterday's video I was talking about cereal and I just completely like forgot that I would have left you guys like wondering what cereal I was eating so the answer is cinnamon toast crunch best cereal there is um, kind of irrelevant but if you guys saw it to the end of the video then you got that um, anyways guys I will see you guys tomorrow trading live or on tomorrow's recap y'all have a good rest of your day